I will speak about how God wants us to see one another. How God wants me to see you. And God wants you to see me. Then, the second part, I will speak about how our Lord Jesus Christ dealt with others during his ministry on earth. And I will conclude with some questions to reflect on, you know, after the lecture, I want each one of us to reflect on these questions because it will tell me how I deal with others and also will tell me how my relation, it will be like assessment on my relationship with God. The whole lecture will revolve around a very important principle. This principle is what does being made and created in God's image have to do with how I treat others? Meaning, when I treat you, I should treat you as the image of God. Once I forget that you are created in the image and likeness of God, then I will treat you wrong. Even the scripture told us, if you curse somebody, how you curse him who is created in the image of God? So this principle actually is very, very important. When we hear about terrorism or murder, we wonder how a person may kill another person in this cruel way. But many times we do not realize that we violate the image of God in others and we are diminishing the quality of their lives in a subtle way and we are killing them not literally but by belittling them judging them criticizing them etc The first point about how the scripture teaches us to treat one another, God actually put us accountable, accountable for the life of others. You are not only accountable for all your life, but you are accountable for the life of others. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 5 and verse 6, Surely for your life blood, I will demand a reckoning. From the hand of every beast, I will require it. And from the hand of man, from the hand of every man's brother, I will require the life of man. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. By man his blood shall be shed. Why? For in the image of God he made man. In the image of God he made man. So, here actually the emphasis, because we are created in the image of God, even if a beast, murdered a man, God will require the blood of this man from the beast. Beast, they don't have any mind or intellect or understanding. But because they attacked a person in the image of God, in the same way, if I kill a person, God will require his blood from my hand why? Because 
in God's image, this person was created. St. James also, in the New Testament, told us how we dishonor the image of God in others. In James chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, He said, with it, with our tongue, we bless our God and Father. And with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God, in the image of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be, to be so. And the emphasis here, that your brother whom you are cursing is created in the image of God. So, we must not only honor the image of God in others by refrain, refraining from killing them and shedding their blood, but also we must refrain from cursing others. According to Webster Dictionary, define cursing as using profanely insolent language against someone. Cursing actually can be very destructive to the other person. That's why in Matthew chapter 5, the Lord linked between anger and murder. In Matthew 5, 21 and 22, You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you, that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whoever says, you fool, shall be in the danger of hell fire. The Lord Jesus Christ linked our, our outward behavior of murder with the inward attitude of condemnation and cursing of others. That's why he said in order not to reach the sin of murder, you need actually to Clean your heart from being angry or condemning your brother within your heart because your brother bears the image of God. So we can say my heart attitude toward the other can damage our relationship. Murder and cursing are violating the dignity of those who are made in the image of God. Another thing, other than murder and cursing, judging by appearance, the Lord Jesus Christ taught us to be careful not to judge other not to evaluate other based on appearance. In John chapter 7 and verse 24, the Lord said, Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment.
these words actually echo what God said to Prophet Samuel in the Old Testament when he sent him to anoint a king. In 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7, the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Many times we get annoyed if others judge us based on our appearance. But in the same time, we have the tendency to judge others based on what? On appearance. As well as we have tendency to make general judgment about what is wrong in the church, in the society, with this group, with this family. And sometimes we don't realize how this statement can hurt the ears of the listener and can cause them to stumble and cause them to be offended. We can easily make judgment based on some aspect of person's appearance without understanding all the circumstances around him. And when actually we judge a person according to his appearance, we are demeaning the image of God in them. This means I failed to see the image of God in them. We should actually see them as people with the real needs who are made in the likeness of their Creator. So if I see something from outside, and to me I don't like it, or I see it wrong, I should think at that this person is in real need. But I should not forget that this person is created in the image of God. Another point in our relationship with others. We want to remake or recreate others in our own image. After God created them in his image, no, we want to remake them, or I can say, recreate them again in my own image. And this is also another way of demeaning the image of God in others. By failing to let people to be themselves, and instead of affirming their unique talent, interest, we try to remake them in our image. And the message we send to them, you are not accepted this way. Many of the family problems among married couples stem from this point. The husband wants to change his wife to the image in his mind and the wife wants to change the husband in the image in her mind. That's actually demeaning the image of God in this person. God created this person in certain qualities and certain talents. And we need actually to affirm this, not to change them. Parents many times want their children to be in a certain way. And instead of affirming their qualities, Uh, 
remaking others in our image is actually a destructive misuse of the gift of creativity that God gave us. I'm using the creativity to remake others in my own image. How we do this? Through criticism, nagging, sometimes through counseling, uh, I'm speaking about secular counseling here. So we try to change the people into another image rather than the image of God. Another way of demeaning or belittling God's image in others, when we close ourselves off from other people, when we start to avoid them, maybe out of fear of confrontation, maybe it's fear of rejection, maybe I don't want to take a certain risk, Maybe out of arrogance. So we tend to ignore people, to undermine their value, to avoid them. So whether we are judging others based on appearance, or I'm trying to make others in my own image, or I am avoiding some person, or I am closing myself off from people. What is the root issue here? It is pride. It's my pride. My pride that make me judge the other. My pride make me try to create you or remake you in my image according to the image of my mind. It's my pride that make me close myself off or avoid you. So we will always fail to honor the image of God in others when we exalt ourselves above others. We are called to honor the image of God in each one of us. But if I exalt myself above you, then how can I honor the image of God in you? And here I forget that both you and I are created in the image of God. Pride focus on us instead of God. It makes us unable to see the image of God in others. These are just some examples about how the scripture wants us to treat one another. But let me see, give you some example how the Lord Jesus Christ dealt with people during his time here on earth. In the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, he did not give us a model how to live our life, an example to follow his footsteps. But he also modeled for us how we should treat one another. The Lord Jesus Christ so no risk at all in relating of people from all races, all genders, all status. And he was always, always seeing the people that they are created in the image of God. The three examples I will use, the example of Nicodemus, the example of the Samaritan woman, 
and the example of the person who was uh, possessed with demon in the territory of the uh, Gergesian. So these are the three examples. Many times when we speak with a person that have different ideolo ideology or different religious view or different political, political view, we forget that they are also created in the image of God. And many times, we are very harsh in judging and uh, criticizing them. And we don't differentiate between judging the wrong ideology and judging the person who is created in the image of God. And some people actually use the social media for this. And how many people are offended when actually they look at the social media and see how we defend our faith in ungodly manner? There is a saying in the paradise of the monks, a demon cannot cast out a demon. So the demon of judgment and harsh criticism cannot cast out the demon of hers. The Lord Jesus Christ met Nicodemus and Nicodemus has or, or came from a different political background, different religious background. He was one of the Jewish leaders and the Lord Jesus Christ was perceived as a threat to the Jewish leaders. Nicodemus was a respected member of the Sanhedrin, as we read in John chapter 3, verse 1. And you can see how Nicodemus was so nervous to come and to talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was nervous to talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he came by night, he came at night, to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. And a question here to us, how we deal with those whom we consider our opponent? Are we willing to sit down with them and talk with them in objective way, not in a judgmental or critical way? When we acknowledge that these people with whom we disagree are made in the image of God, this actually will open the door for a gracious dialogue. Another example is the example of the Samaritan woman. The Lord was remarkably gentle with her. Although she made the wrong choices over and over. Maybe if I meet a friend who made the wrong choice over and over, I will become impatient with him. And I come frustrated. I'm not willing to give him another advice. I'm not willing to talk to him anymore. He did not learn from five uh, ex uh, negative experiences before. But the Lord actually taught us a lesson that because we lose patient, patience with people like that, 
then we also have a destructive pattern. Not only them, but also I have a destructive pattern of losing patience. Every time you lose patience with whom we perceive sinners, all of us are sinners. Remember how the Lord dealt with the Samaritan woman. All the community judges this woman and were very critical of her. That's why she went to the well at noon time to avoid everybody. Nobody goes to draw water during noon time. They go either early in the morning or in the evening. And when she started speaking with the Lord Jesus Christ, she was very defensive at the beginning. And this defensiveness out of her insecurity. But when she saw that the Lord did not condemn her, rather with compassion, he revealed himself as the Messiah. And he described to her the living water that could satisfy her thirst for a strong relationship. And when we ask ourselves why the Lord actually treated this woman this way, why he valued her? Because she was created in the image of God. So the Lord here crossed over the ethnic, gender, societal prejudice that isolated her and made her go to the well during noon time. He looked at her as a person created and bearing the image of God and valued this image. That's why when he saw she is thirsty for meaningful relationship, so the Lord actually modeled this meaningful relationship with her when he accepted her as she is and then by this acceptance he was able to convert her and after she was avoiding everybody once she felt this acceptance this love she left the jug of water and immediately she started to interact with others because through the interaction with our Lord Jesus Christ, she got rid of the shame. Because she saw acceptance. She saw appreciation of her as a bearer of the image of God. We need actually, when we deal with people to look beyond their shortcomings and to realize their value as bearers of the image of God, here only we'll be able to deal with them in the right way. Another story, when the Lord dealt with the man who was possessed with demons, the Lord actually, all those who are rejected by the society, he dealt with them, the lepers. He actually touched the leper in contrary to the law that prevent the Jewish people from touching a leper. He went to the blind man and healed him. He went to the paralytic person who was paralyzed for 38 years and healed him. And here with this person who was demon possessed. Uh, the Lord responded with compassion. 
we saw in the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ touching, healing, freeing, restoring to the image of God, usually this was his pattern. Let us see how this person, how the society dealt with this person, and how the Lord Jesus Christ dealt with him. In Mark chapter 5, from verse 1, we'll see, uh, actually the people put him to a way to live in the tombs, as we read in verse 2. Immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with unclean spirit. And they wanted to bind him who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with the chains. So how the people dealt with him? Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. So this person actually was rejected by everybody. And once the Lord reached the, this area, this person actually <coughs> greeted him but by screaming and crying with loud voice, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the Most High? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. And we see how the Lord Jesus Christ cast out the demons from him and freed him to reflect the image of God more clearly. What was the reaction of the people? Very strange reaction. In verse 15, then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and closed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. They should be happy for him. But they went to the Lord Jesus Christ and they began to plead with him to depart from the region. Why? Because the demons entered into the swine and the swine ran uh, down uh, the steep place into the sea and were drowned into the sea. And we can see how the Lord Jesus Christ delivered this person from the position of the demons in order to enable him to be the person who is created in the image of God. But the people actually, they were offended because of the, uh, the drowning of the swine and asking the Lord Jesus Christ to leave. Instead of celebrating this, they asked the Lord Jesus Christ just to leave. In our life, we have several opportunities to meet people and to help them to be free from the demonic uh, influence. Not necessarily they are possessed by demon. When we treat them as the image of God and bearers of that image, when we deal with other people with dignity and respect, then actually we are reflecting the reflecting God in our relationship with others. So let me conclude by asking some questions to ourselves in order to be able to see others through his eyes. And as I, as I told you, the way 
we deal with others will tell me a lot about my relationship with God. As I told you in the beginning, if I'm filled with the Spirit and I have a strong relationship with God, then I will treat others as the bearer of the image of God. The opposite is true. The way I treat others will tell me a lot about how my relationship with God is. Many persons say, I don't know. Am I close to God or am I? How would I know? Think about how you deal with others. So, these are questions. How do I view and value people of other genders, ethnicity, cultures, religions, or socioeconomic conditions? How can I value them and I view them? Another question. Am I demonstrating love respect and dignity that the people in my world deserve as image of God? Is there anyone to whom I am not offering these things, love, respect, dignity? The third question, are there any particular individual in my life that God wants me to relate to him or to her differently. And what should I do about this? This is actually is ongoing process. And when we ask these questions to ourselves on a regular basis, on a daily basis, when we stop judging people and criticizing them, when we start to deal with them as the bearer of the image of God, then actually this will enrich my image with God because both feed each other. My relationship with God feed my relationship with others and how I treat others make me stand before God, uh, if I can say blamelessly, and with a repentant heart. So this will enrich my relationship with God. May the Lord actually, who called us, to love him and to love the other. That's all the Bible. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. May the Lord touch our heart in order to understand that every single person in the whole world are created and they are bearers in the image of God. And let us treat one another with the dignity, with the respect, with love that they deserve as they are the bearers of the image of God. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.